Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 80 with me Craig Barton. Now this is the third in our series of special Resource of the Week videos where each week we look at a complete lesson and we dissect it to see the um, author's way of thinking, the way the structure in the resources, the way they're putting together the activities and so on. And me as a teacher I find this dead dead useful as opposed to just getting a worksheet or a single PowerPoint or so on, the advantage of somebody uploading a complete lesson is that you can completely see their train of thought. You can deconstruct this, pull it apart, adapt it, and then use it to build up a lesson for yourself that suits your teaching style and the needs of your students, etc. So um, this week we're going to feature one of my favourite resource uploaders, uh, Pixie17, and one of her classic lessons on averages from frequency tables. Now, uh, what's nice about this one, um, in contrast to the previous two excellent lessons that we featured, is that we have accompanying worksheets with this and starter activities. So you've got to download a fair few things here, but with Tez's wonderful new feature, you can do all of that with one click of the mouse. So um, here is the uh, PowerPoint that goes with it. So we have um, a starter activity, which I'll show you in a sec. And also this is the title screen that's on the page. And I like this here, just uh, some things for the students to remember, mode, median, um, mean is the middle, means uh, work out and so on. So that's on the board already in students' minds when they come in. So the starter activity is something very close to my heart. It's a wonderful Tarsier jigsaw activity. And those of you who've ever heard me speak at any stage when all, I'm obsessed with these. And of course, uh, this is a straightforward Tarsier in the sense that you just have to match up the uh, right question with the correct answer. And as ever, you get the solution presented for you there. But again, those of you who ever heard me speak in the last couple of years will know I'm a huge fan of doing a little twist on that and perhaps giving the students this answer sheet instead, but making two or three absolutely key mistakes there and seeing if the students can spot those mistakes and correct them. It saves paper and it makes it a much more rich and engaging activity. And if you just Google Mr. Barton Tarsia, you, you'll, you'll be able to read my thoughts on that in, in numerous places. So a wonderful starter activity to get the students going. And then the lesson proceeds uh, with um, a challenge for the students to do, work out the mean using the frequency table. And I like that, it doesn't tell the students how to do it. Perhaps they're gonna have five, 10 minutes to discuss that. And then a really well structured example for the, for, uh, for the students to get, teacher to take the students through and the students to copy down if they need to. Then they've got to work out the median and so on. And this lesson's really, really well structured. Then it moves into grouped activity, uh, grouped means and medians and so on and working out ranges and you've got your classic midpoints. But this is what I wanted to focus on because this is where I think uh, the lesson gets really, really interesting. And I know this will be slightly controversial for, for some teachers and that's why I wanted to bring it up. Because uh, um, the t pupils are then put in charge of choosing which level of worksheet they fancy doing, they fancy having a go at. So how do you feel about calculating averages from a table? Collect the corresponding task. Now this then refers to this uh, worksheet here where you've got the green task, uh, you have got the amber task and you've got the red task. If I just go down here. Now, one thing I particularly like about this is each of the questions is actually the same, but for uh, the different levels of activity, um, different pieces of information will be removed. So if we look at this first one here, the table shows 100 students in the test, calculate mean, medium mode, uh, mean, mode and medium, no other help given. But if we go down to the green, uh, we can see when we start to get a little bit more structured help and that continues through question two where students are actually drawn the third column on the table, uh, whereas they're not given that piece of information for the uh, for the, green t uh, for the green worksheet. Now I know some teachers will be saying, well, stu students shouldn't be the ones selecting their level of work, it should be down to the teacher. And I believe there's quite a bit of validity in that particular argument. But I really like the fact that these tasks have been chosen so that the questions themselves are the same, but the level of structured support is different. And that for me is much more effective differentiation than giving the students completely different tasks to do. And what you would hope would happen here is that maybe a student who's lacking in confidence would start on red and then hopefully them, themselves say, actually miss, can I just try a bit of amber or a bit of green for these later questions? Or better still, be sat next to someone who's trying perhaps the green worksheet or the amber worksheet who can then help guide them through it and offer them more structured support. So really nice accompanying set of worksheets, which whether you agree with it or not, certainly shows the author's way of thinking through this particular lesson. 
um, and then it's really nice because all the questions were the same but just with different structured support um, the, the same answers can be projected up for everybody and I've found in the past when I've watched lessons where different students get different worksheets it's an absolute car crash when it comes to trying to give out the answers at the end here everybody's been working on the same thing so everybody can buy into this answer giving process and then we get a nice little um, plenary here where three things you knew already two you've learned today and one question about um, today's topic um, and that that feeds into the classic what went well what went better and so on but I quite like I quite like that that approach this the three two one approach uh, the other accompanying thing that you get with this is um, averages exam questions and this seems to be a common theme um, uh, on less uh, in lessons that are uploaded to TAS and I think I think there's a good reason why and that's because it's a really really valid thing to do um, it's nice, especially if you want to demonstrate progress, to be able to say to students, this is from your higher tier GCSE, or this is from an old SATs paper, level seven, or whatever. Um, and also, it's a motivating factor for the students if they know that this is actually something that they will be encountering in actual proper exams that they take. So I'm a big fan of using um, exam questions, and that there's loads there for you, to, you and your students to use. So again, another different style of lesson that we've seen um, in contrast to the other two. Um, and again, a nice wide variety of tasks, a nice clear structure to it. And this time we have the differentiation built in there, which perhaps we didn't see in the previous two lessons, um, where students have got three different levels of task to be taken on um, with the same questions, but different levels of support. So if that's something that you like, that's something you can take away from this lesson. And then also use the previous two lessons we featured in this series to look at the wide variety of tasks, the different ways of structuring things and just the, the whole wealth of different ways that you can approach all these topics. And if this is proving popular and proving useful, please let me know and I will continue to feature some complete lessons and look to deconstruct them in future weeks. Take care and bye for now.